Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll, I'll let you be seated. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, Brother Simmons, and um, love you very, very much, and I appreciate it. You're just doing a tremendous job. There's a lot of transition going in on in our district and uh, different uh, new positions. As you know, if you've been around at all, Bishop Putnam has been our district superintendent for 19 years, and, and uh, we were just... Uh, um, uh, asked to serve in this capacity at our last district conference, and we're going to try and do our best. But to fill the shoes of Bishop Putnam are uh, mighty big shoes to fill. And uh, but uh, we're just do you pray for us? And I thank the Lord for Brother Rufus Parker, uh, our presbyter from Section Four. Brother Pace, our presbyter from Section One. These are incredible men. The district board and uh, Brother Bennett and Brother Hanthorn and. Brother Roy Grant and our district secretary, Brother Herman, are incredible men, and so we thank the Lord for them. And by the way, brother, as long as we're promoting books, Brother Parker was a command sergeant major. That's as high as you can go in uh, in the army. A, a, a non. Uh, uh, commissioned uh, officer, I'm not saying that right, uh, but he's the highest that you could go, and he's written some books. If anybody knows how to be a man, it's Rufus, Brother Rufus Parker, and he's got some books there, and you would be good. Now, there's not a lot of pictures. There's a picture of him, and he's okay looking, but, uh, but there's a lot of good stuff in the book, and you should go buy some of those. If you don't have those books, you need to buy them, and uh, if you do have them, get a couple extras that you can give to some men, because they will bless you, because he's an apostolic man through and through, and so praise the Lord for that. Amen, 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 amen. I want to be apostolic. I absolutely want to be apostolic. And if we're going to be apostolic, we need to be apostolic, amen, not only in our experience and experiencing the salvation and our worship and our holiness, but we also need to be apostolic in our giving. The, uh, the book of Acts, they gave. And so I, I'm, I, I just w would like to know if there's anybody that would like to take, join uh, us here in taking Brother Long on uh, for uh, uh, Partners in Missions. Uh, that's how he is supported. That's how he's going to get back to the field. And uh, it's a monthly support if you don't know about that. But pastors, you're aware of it. Is there anybody that will join us? Brother Rogers, thank you. Anybody else would like to, Brother, uh, both Brother Rogers, you too are not related, are you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any, anybody else want to take on? Amen. Thank you, brethren. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. I appreciate Brother Long. I appreciate you going to Nicar Nicaragua. That's not exactly the easiest place to go. And uh, what an incredible burden. And thank you. Uh, I hope someday I'll get to go there, but if I don't, I'm thankful that you're able to go. Praise the Lord, and that you're there ministering, you and your wife. And I pray the blessing of the Lord upon you and God's protection upon you and use you in a mighty way. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Again, I give honor to Brother, Brother Rogers. I give honor to Brother, Brother Newbel, and uh, I give honor to uh, Brother uh, Palmer. I give honor to Brother uh, Uselman. I give honor to Brother Otto. I give brother honor to Brother Richie, who are on the men's committee, and they're doing so, and Brother Simmons. They're doing an incredible job, and I think we should stand and clap our hands. They've, what a great camp. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Of course, we love Brother Tim Green. We knew Brother Tim Green before he was famous. The first church to have Brother Green, it's true. First church to have Brother Green preach at uh, was uh, in Appleton. Pastor, my, my dear friend, Brother Yance, who's since gone on to be with the Lord. And he called me and he said, hey, you know, there's this guy. He's a pretty good preacher. Would you consider having him? And so I said, well, okay. I trust you, Brother Yance. And what an incredible impact he's made at FGC. And, Kane, that was 20 years ago. 
20, maybe 22, 21, 22 years ago, came, your whole family came. I don't think Judah was born yet when you came. And uh, Praise the Lord. Uh, great man, and I appreciate the word. And I will try. I'm supposed to be done at 9.50, so I have 10 minutes. It may be a little longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> Exodus 12, 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. Strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door. Everybody say door. door. Of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when you see it, the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door. Everybody say door. door. And will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Then Revelations 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door, everybody say door, door, and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, everybody say door, door. I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. This may shock you, but I want to preach on doors. Amen. Father, I ask you to anoint us here. I ask you to help us with the time that we have together here. Father, I pray, Lord. Let it not be my words, but let it be your words, Father. And I pray not only anoint me, but I pray anoint every man here. Thank you for these apostolic men that are here in this house and have come at sacrifice to be here. Father, I pray, move and continue to move in a mighty way, Lord. I pray. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. We could take them for granted, but doors are of incredible importance to each and every one of us. Perhaps number one, doors and doorways are places of transition. A door is used to enter a place. A door is used to exit a place. Doors are places of security, and they are places of secrecy. Open doors represent transparency. Open doors represent transition. Uh, closed doors represent privacy. Uh, closed doors represent protection. The first time door is mentioned in the Bible is while God is having a conversation with Cain. Genesis 4 verse 6 states this, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy, thou, thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. We learn this, that sin, evil, is lurking at the door of Cain's heart because of jealousy and anger. We learn that sin desires to rule over Cain. But God tells Cain something very important, that he should rule over sin. The whole lesson is over whether Cain chooses to keep the door shut or not. Whether he allows his jealousy and anger to come in and dominate him or if he keeps the door shut. What an absolutely incredible lesson for us all to learn. The law of first mention teaches us that we all have a door to our heart. By our attitudes, we are the ones. Please hear this. By our attitudes, we are the ones who welcome things to our doorstep. That which lurks at our door is there because of the attitude that is screaming out from our our life. Uh, things lurk at our door uh, because we invite them because of the desires uh, of our heart. Uh, however, we control to who, what, and when we open the door of our heart to. You and I have got to realize something here today. There are doors in our lives that the Lord has closed, but we have the ability to push them 
open. You know, some people are, are tempted by certain things. Some men battle certain things, while others don't battle those things. I am convinced it's because of an attitude. It's because of something that is in your heart or in my heart. There are things that I don't deal with that you deal with because there are things in your heart. There are things I deal with that you don't deal with because there are attitudes that are in my heart. But there's a door there. And I choose whether I'm going to let it in or keep it out. Unfortunately, Cain opened a door in his life that impacted generations to follow. Cain allowed jealousy and anger in. And the result was that when jealousy and anger came in, uh, murder came out. Uh, Cain killed his brother Abel. All because Cain's opened the door of anger and jealousy. We must be very, very careful uh, what doors we open up in our lives. Uh, Cain's attitude invited things to his doorstep. Uh, Our attitudes will invite things to our doorstep. Uh, May we keep the door closed to those things uh, that will be destructive. I'm fascinated by this. I'm absolutely fascinated by the reference to doors in the Bible. It appears to me that there is a greater emphasis on keeping doors shut in the Bible than open. While while doors can represent a refusal to grow, a refusal to learn, a, a refusal to be open, I understand that. But closed doors also represent protection and blessings. Please notice the following examples of the blessings of closed doors. Noah built the ark according to the specific commands of the Lord. Once completed, the Lord told Noah, his family, and all the animals to get into the ark. Once the ark, once in the ark, the Lord shut the door. The closed door of the ark singled safety for Noah and his family. The Lord sent two angels uh, to get Lot and his family out of Sodom uh, while two strangers were telling Lot uh, to get he and his family together to leave Sodom. Uh, A gang of Sodomites uh, came demanding the two strangers. Uh, Lot offered his two daughters, which I will never understand, uh, in place of these two strangers. Uh, But the the men only wanted uh, the strangers. Uh, And the Bible says in Genesis 19.9, and they said, uh, uh, these angels, angels uh, uh, said stand back Uh, and they said again this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will needs be a judge now will we deal worse with thee than with them and they pressed sore upon the man even Lot and came near to break the door but the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door and they smote the men that they were at the door of the house with blindness both small and great so that they wearied themselves to find the door it was the closed door of Lot's house that kept the would be rapists out it was the closed door that brought protection to his daughters Jesus Christ taught uh, about the importance of prayer in his Sermon on the Mount. Uh, But Jesus also taught about praying uh, with the right attitude and motives. Uh, So Jesus mentions the importance of a a door while praying. Uh, He said in Matthew 6, 6, But thou, when thou prayest, uh, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, uh, pray to thy Father which is in secret, uh, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Uh, A close Closed door of prayer marks single focus. Amen. It marks a single devotion to the Lord. It's I'm not going to be influenced by anything else. My door, my heart is shut. I'm focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the parable of the ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. The foolish virgins had no oil in their lamps. When when the call came, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Only those that had oil in their lamps were ready to go. The foolish went to buy more oil. But when they came to the house of the bridegroom, the door was closed. Matthew 25, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they were ready. They, They that were ready went in with him 
relationship to the marriage uh, and the door was shut. Uh, the closed door of the bridegroom's home marked inclusion uh, to the marriage celebration uh, for those who were ready. Uh, I'm convinced of this. Uh, I don't think this is just talking about heaven here uh, if you'll allow me some latitude. Uh, but I believe where there's a closed door, uh, amen, to the things uh, that will be destructive, uh, it will truly allow us to experience the celebration and the blessings of Almighty God. I'm here to tell you, God wants to bless your life. God wants to bless your family. God wants to bless, praise the Lord, your home. But there's got to be some doors that have got to be closed. Oh, hallelujah. We must be very careful what doors we open in our lives, brethren. I want only the doors that the Lord wants open to be opened. I don't want to force the door, any doors that the Lord doesn't want open, open. You got to understand something. Amen. Opening doors to sin not only impacts and affects our lives, but it impacts generations to come are impacted by doors that we open in our lives today. You think it doesn't matter what I'm doing today. You may be here single. You may be here thinking nobody cares about me. But I'm here to tell you, hey man, you begin to open up some doors. You're not the only one that's going to be impacted. But generations to come will be impacted by decisions that you make today. In the giving of the Ten Commandments, the Lord brings to our attention a very important principle. He says this in Exodus 20. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This truth is mentioned again in Exodus 34 and in Numbers 14 and other places in the Bible. Children and remote descendants inherit the consequences of their parents' sins. The sin of the parents will have an effect all the way to the great-grandchildren. There is a cycle or a chain of sin. Those generations follow with, it will, following will inherently struggle with. We must understand that each individual must give account for his or her own lives, his or her own sins. I get that. The the father, Deuteronomy 24 says, the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. I get that. Every person is responsible for his own life. But there is a tendency, brethren, for children to follow the paths of their fathers. The Lord was showing to us that once iniquity is bred in a life, it is passed on to their children and to their children's children and so on. Alcoholics have a tendency to have children who are weak and struggle with forms of addiction. Moral weaknesses are passed down to the next generation for each of the following generations struggle with sexual things, promiscuity, adultery, pornography, lewdness, bitterness is an iniquity that is passed down to future generations. A writer of Hebrews says, look at Dylan lest any man fail of the grace of God. Let any, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Laziness, lack of responsibility, uncontrollable anger, disrespect for authority and rebellion, all of these are inherited traits, attitudes that are passed on to the next generation and the next generation. I stand here and lift my voice and say we must break the chain of iniquity I stand here and say we must go on the offensive I'm sick of this we blame everybody else for our faults or say there's nothing we can do about it because of how our parents were or our grandparents were how our preacher was my God we must take responsibility ourselves and realize our actions today will affect future generations
generations. We need to close some doors. We need to close some doors. If you're a man, you need to close some doors. Oh, clap your hands to the Lord. We must take the responsibility to make sure the mercy of God is upon our lives. We need the mercy of God upon our lives and the lives of our families. The Ten Commandments, the Lord tells us how we have mercy upon our families forever. Exodus 26, I read it before, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. If we will love God with all of our hearts and obey the word of God, we will pass that tendency down to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. You're not, a, you're not just in a bunch of woods here on this beautiful campground. Amen. Doing nothing. What you've been doing here the past few days. Amen. Is you've been declaring, praise the Lord. Amen. To whoever will listen, to whoever will hear it, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm a man. Uh, I'm an apostolic man. Uh, I'm trying to love God. Uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect, uh, but I'm trying my best to serve the Lord. Uh, amen. And I want to draw near to him. Uh, and that impact uh, is not just going to stay up here in the Shano area, uh, but it's going to impact, praise the Lord. Uh, oh, Amen. All the way to the North Ashland. All the way, praise the Lord, to Kenosha. All the way to Hudson, praise the Lord. All the way to Lake Michigan, praise the Lord. It's going to make an impact. Oh, God. In the Song of Solomon, Solomon writes this, writes to his brothers about their little sister becoming a woman. Please notice this. Song of Solomon 8, verse 9. If she be a wall, if she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. If she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. Wow. If she's a wall, or in other words, says no to other men's sexual advances, we're going to build her a palace of silver. We're going to give her much honor and reward. If she's a door, or in other words, if she's accessible to anyone and everyone, we, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. If she's a door, we need to protect her. This verse tells me the simple but profound truth. If we have a sister or a brother in the Lord who has built a wall, we need to honor and affirm them. If we have a brother or a sister in the Lord who's doing their best to be a godly person in an ungodly world, we need to bless and we need to encourage them. Fathers, you need to bless and encourage. Amen. Your daughters and your sons, if they're doing the best they can to live godly and righteously. Amen. Hey, brethren. Amen. Whether you have kids or don't have kids, uh, the kid, the young people in your church, uh, amen, that you attend, uh, if they're trying to live godly, they might not be perfect. They might not listen to music you like. They might seem to dress a little odd, a little weird. Amen. But you know what's up? That if they're there at church uh, and they're trying to live for God, I'm tired of us pushing people down. Amen. They're trying amen to build a wall they're trying to live for God amen we need to honor we need to bless him if we have a sister or a brother who has a door we need to intercede on their behalf and we need to pray a hedge round about them oh well they just backslid I don't know if this is good or bad, but my longest prayer list is backsliders. Why well, I say is I don't know if it's good because there's so many that are left the church. 
Amen. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to be praying. I'm trying to pray for them. I try and pray for them every day, and I'm not some hero, but I just want you to know something. I don't want to forget if our brothers or sisters in the Lord have opened themselves up to ungodly influences and destructive behavior, we need to go to battle for them. We need to go to battle for them. Praise the Lord. Amen. If they've opened the door, amen, to chunk, if they're doing stuff wrong, if they're backslid, amen, rather than giving up on them, we need to go to paddle, amen, and we need to build a wall around them, praise the Lord. We have spiritual weapons through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We must break the chains of sin that will come, and that will come as we go on the offensive. May the words of Jeremiah not be the words that our children speak. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. The Bible calls them familiar spirits as family spirits. You have a grandfather that was a murderer. You have a father that was an alcoholic. You have a brother that's a sexual deviant. You can stop the cycle. You can stop the cycle. Be a righteous man. Close the door. I don't know if you're battling with pornography. I don't know if you've had issues uh, for generational, generational. Uh, hey Amen. It's never been easier uh, to click uh, and to just search and to find stuff. Hey Amen. Uh, junk. Uh, if you're battling with that, I'm not here to call you out. I'm here to challenge you to something. Be a righteous man. Uh, hey Amen. Close the door. Praise the Lord. Uh, close the door. Close the door. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Come on. Let's go on the offensive. I'm tired of somehow the devil beating us up and saying, oh, you're a loser. It's over. Why don't you just quit? Come on, be a man. Say, no, I'm closing the door. This is where it stops right now. Jesus. Oh, I can't afford to be bitter. I can't afford to be rebellious. I can't afford to be irresponsible. <laughs> Maybe I can make things right before I die. But what about the generation to come? Come on, hear me. I need to close doors. We must break the chains of generational sins. My actions today will impact future generations. We declare to you that you cannot have our marriages. You will not have our children. You will not have our families. You will not have our generation or the generations to come. You will not have our blessings. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We will drive back the darkness so that the glory of God shall shine more strongly. Oh. Oh. oh, clap your hands to the Lord. Let us be in agreement.
in, in, in well-ordered Jewish homes, in devout Orthodox Jewish homes, there is a little, it's a Mishnah, it's a Kofi, a mezuzah. There's a mezuzah, thank you, on the doors of every, on the doors of every devout Jew. And what is that? It simply says, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Our text back several hours ago when we began preaching was that the children of Israel, that first Passover, what were they supposed to do? They would put the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts. I propose, amen, that we do not have to kill a lamb. He was sacrificed already, the lamb was. But if on your doors of your heart, hear Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. If the blood has been applied to the door of your heart, praise the Lord. Then when the enemy comes knocking at your door, no, there is only one true living God, and his name is Jesus. And I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. We're covered by his word. We're covered by his blood. Oh, I go through. I go through my house when I got home. <laughs> the doorway into the bedroom of my kids. The doorway into my my bedroom. Into the entry point of my house. I plead the blood in the name of Jesus. I declare there's only one true living God, and his name is Jesus. And I serve him. Oh, Jesus. And devil, this door is shut. This door is shut. But my last verse, and I'm done, and you've been kind, and I've preached over my allotted time. Revelation 3.20. Okay, we need to keep the door closed, except we need to open the door of our hearts to Jesus Christ. Behold, I stand at the door a knock and if any man will hear my voice and open the door I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me Genesis and Revelation teach us amen all the way back at Genesis we learned amen that we control the access we control the access if I'm going to let bitterness in it's because not because somebody did me bad I let it in if I'm going to let pornography in, it's not because, amen, my daddy brought me playboys, amen, in penthouse. It's because I opened up the door. Amen. But if Jesus comes in, it's because I've let him in. And so the few moments here before we transition to another speaker, could we open up the doors of our heart and say, Jesus, I need you to come in all over this place. Every man, amen, every man, every man here. Oh, would you open up the door of your heart and say, Jesus, I want you in. There might be stuff that's there. There might be some anger. There might be some jealousy. There might be some rebellion. There may be some wickedness and some evil. But it doesn't have to stay there. Open up the door and let Jesus come in and clean your house. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yanamo shataya tarabahaya kataya. Yanamo shataya tarabahataya taya. Yanamo shataya taya taya. Yanamo shataya. I feel the Holy Ghost.